Good night, folks. It's Craig Caffrey from Medical Gardens. I'm here on behalf of Wyndham City Council, and today I'm going to talk about how to grow your edibles. Now, I think a lot of people think that edible plants, vegetables, herbs, and so forth all belong in a vegetable patch. And to be honest, that's about the worst place that you could plant them because you instantly start to put them into competition for food, water, and light with one another, particularly if you're planting them in rows. Now, if you plant a heap of cabbages all in a row, because insects recognise things by leaf shape, they see them straight away, and unfortunately, if one gets a pest, they're all going to get a pest. Uh, same with disease. If one gets a, a, a disease, they'll all get it. So, what I want to try and show you today is to discourage you from growing things in rows, unless they absolutely have to, and there are some things, like corn, um, and of course, at this time of year, corn is not one that you put in the ground, that's a summer bed. But certainly broad beans is one of those that needs to be grown in a block, uh, preferably, because they're wind pollinated. But there are a few other things that you really need to be planting um, of the same variety altogether. Uh, what I try to do is to uh, use a term called companion planting. And uh, companion planting means to break them up a little bit like they would be broken up if they were grown in their natural habitats, surrounded by things that help them along. Beneficial predators, insects that pollinate, um, and so on. And some things actually help deter pests, like uh, marigolds, for instance, or calendula. Um, particularly marigold has got quite a pungent uh, odour, which is pleasant to us, but tends to either mask or deter insects that would otherwise find whatever is planted next to it favourable to eat. So you can see by using companion planting, you can actually minimise the amount of chemicals and sprays that you're likely to be using in your garden. Um, I, I like to use a term, uh, and, and it goes like this, what goes well on the plate together goes well in the ground together. So one of those marriages uh, on a plate uh, is tomato, basil and garlic, and it just so happens that it is garlic season at the moment. I think I've potentially alluded to that in one of the previous videos. Um, what I try and do is I plant a circle of garlic around about a metre in diameter uh, in my garden somewhere and in the middle of that marks the spot for a tomato when, it, uh, when, when it's tomato season which is around about October and November. Um, they're a great marriage made in heaven and of course once the tomato skin hit go in then I put in a couple of different varieties of basil and then circle it with uh, you know some different varieties of lettuce and so forth. So if you think about what would go into a salad, you would grow all together in that one spot. I rarely ever plant tomatoes together and uh, the reason I don't do that is that because of that pest scenario. If one gets a pest or a disease, they all get it. And of course, uh, if you're growing them all in a row, uh, there's a good chance that you're not going to get great success because um, you'll find when you're watering, you're generally not watering individually, you're watering based on where they are. Uh, you've got no idea how much the one in the middle gets, opposed to the one on the end and so on. Whereas when they're separated in their small groups, you'll find that when you water, you water for that one individual plant and you tend to measure how much water you give it based on its height and size. So we'll go for a bit of a wander around the garden and I'll point out some interesting little bits and pieces that will give you some insight on what you might be able to do in your garden with companion planting and not worry so much about having to put in a vegetable patch. Just use your garden as a place to grow food. Um, I tend to overplant my garden beds, which happens to shade out the weeds, which is a wonderful thing. I know what I'd rather be pulling out of my garden. Something to eat rather than something to have to throw out. So let's go for a wander around the garden. So folks, this is a wicking bed. Uh, a self-watering pot, basically, only large scale as you can see but I guess what I'm going to try and show you here is that notice how things aren't cropped spring onions, some celery over here lettuce you've got uh, some blue flowering lobelia a lovely little uh, orange pansy a couple of different varieties of lettuce another 
lovely little celery and some spring onion but what I've also done here is I allow some of my lettuce to go to seed and have a look what's happened this is all lettuce this is all free lettuce that have I've just simply brushed the top of the of the plants as they've uh, gone to seed and and up they've come so I'll just use a little garden trowel now and I'll transfer those into another part of the garden so there you go that's a little bit more of how to grow in your backyard okay folks so this is a garden bed where I've planted some small amounts of garlic in a circular fashion and in the middle there's a little bit of fennel and I'll harvest that fennel well before October, November when it comes time to plant a tomato in the middle of all of these. Um, while I'm here, I might have a quick look. And as you can see, this is an espaded apple tree grown on a frame. And its companion down below are some garlic chives. And uh, they help keep the codling moth off um, the apple tree. Now beside it is a rhubarb. Now apple and rhubarb go really, really well on the plate together. Uh, so they actually are very, very good uh, companions with one another. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Uh, all the very best.